Now, if you do have your Bibles, and we pray that you do, we know that we read from the King James, but we'll be using different translations in our uh, presentation. But if you have your Bible, we know we've been dealing with this last book of the Old Testament, the book of Malachi, and we uh, moved up and down, how you want to say it, to the fifth charge, and we want to look at verses uh, from the third chapter, verses really verse 7, but we want to read one verse above it and one verse below it, uh, verse 6 and verse 8 of that third chapter. When you're found it, if you say amen, amen. Uh, we will read it, let us read it together if you don't mind. And it says, for I am the Lord, I change not, therefore your sons of Jacob are not consumed, even from the days of your fathers, you were gone away from my audience and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and in offering. Thank you so much. And again, we're going to be focusing on verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my audiences and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? We want to look at it from the thought of today, if guilty. Take the offer, return and rejoice, or with guilt to take the offer and rejoice. Tell your neighbor, that can be. Tell your neighbor, that can be. Some rejoicing. I know it don't maybe not look that way, but there can be some rejoicing. Again, to all of you that gathered on this dreary day. We do thank God even for the dreariness. For without the rain at these type of days the crops could not function. And so we are not close up when God sends a little rain. But if we think about our emotions, uh, how our emotions really tell a story about us, especially short time or short term, that our emotions, our facial expressions, how we act many times can tell how things are going or progressing in our lives. When something good happens, when you get some good news, you receive a promotion, you get a bonus, or uh, your team wins the Super Bowl next Sunday. Usually, no one has to ask the question if you are a winner or if you are a loser. If you get news that was good and it was an option, if it could go left or it could go right, no one have to ask the question if they watch it closely, what was the result? Because usually our expressions will tell the story. And I know without a doubt that sadly sometime if it was up to us, not sometime, if it was up to us, we would make sure that all of the time our emotions would show that of happiness. Mm -hmm. That the news is always good. That the uh, reports are all, always great. But sadly, you said, just like I'm standing, can report that many times we don't have control over the outcome. And because we don't have control over the outcome, sometimes the news, the reports, are not good. 
and then you can look also at the expression. Well, in the message today, Israel faced or had the opportunity of changing, maybe not changing the outcome, but determining how the outcome would be. They could stay in a dreary, messy, miserable condition outside of the ark of God, or they could accept his offer and return and rejoice. And we find Israel now at a decision time, at the crossroad. And I realize that if we look at our lives, we too face those or that same decision. We can determine or decide to return or come, if you've never been there, uh -huh. to God and rejoice, or we can stay in our miserable situation or circumstances, believing that man can solve all of our problems. All right. But anybody in here, it should be someone that can acknowledge that man cannot handle right. all of our right. circumstances. Right. Anybody ever went to the doctor and found out that the doctor, I know we have some physicians in here, but, but I share this and I share this true that I found out that many times we had made statements about doctors saying they don't have the answer, but for a seven, six month old grandson when the doctor came, we don't know what's going on. All right. That's just some hard and new. They said it's like trying to find, and this is not, I know these are terms that they put up later, said that it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. This is one of the reports that they gave us on Monday mornings and sitting at La Bonna. They don't have the answers. And not only is it medical, but many times uh, we find that man does not have the answer to our uh, circumstances. So what do you do? But many have fallen into that situation that man can solve all of our uh, problem. And so Israel was in a situation that they could return to God and put it in God's hand, or they could stay where they are and stay in the same situation that they were in. Now we looked at uh, this book of Malachi, we looked at four of the charges, and, and just to try to briefly update us to where we are for, uh, I see some faces that I haven't seen, we're glad to see you all on today, but just filling us up briefly where we are with Israel at this time. Israel in this book was not was, was not at one of their easy times in their life. And life was not easy for Israel at this time. They, they, they remember they had been uh, taken away from their homeland, but now a part of the river had come back home. They had rebuilt the temple, but the temple was not in the manner that it was before. And, and now they were dealing with a restoration, not only of the ground, but they were now dealing with rest, rest, restoration of the people. And, and they were now under the political dominance of, of uh, Persia. And the main thing worse is that their financial situation was not good. Uh -huh. And how many of you know when your financial situation is not good? Right. It can affect some of everything else. Oh, yeah. They said that their harvest, and we're going to look at it, it's going to tell us down in these verses later that their harvest was not good. And when the harvest is not good, if you don't have food, you act strange ways. As a yeah, matter of fact, we act strange when, when we our finances are not all that together for. Uh, if you check the facts that if you look at what is the highest cause of divorce, uh -huh. many think it's unfaithfulness, but it's due to finances. But when you don't have finances or somebody mishandled finances, it can lead to other problems. And, and so uh, Israel, harvest was poor, and, and all of these things uh, led them to not trust in God or they had become resentful towards God for they really blamed God for the problem. All right. and, and so their people, their hope in God's covenant, uh, they didn't believe because he didn't come quickly as they thought he should uh -huh. come. They now had uh, their hope in God had dimmed and because of these many uh, factors in their life, they were straying 
away from God. All right. And because of that action, God sends the prophet Malachi, and he had Malachi to talk to them, and he brings six charges against them. We looked at the first four, and uh, we find in charge one, he charged them with being uh, a doubting God's love. You know, that's a tough thing when you doubt somebody loves you. Uh -huh. Because when you doubt that they love you, guess what? Mm. You won't love them back. Right. If we don't love them back, you won't do what mm. you're supposed to do in that relationship. And then uh, God charged them with dishonoring God's name. And how many of you know God's name? In God's name. God's name in itself should grant or should uh, uh, earn our uh, respect. His name. It said that the name of Jesus, every knee shall, shall bow. They were dishonoring God's name. And then the third charge God brought against them, he said they were unfaithful. And, and the fourth charge was they were questioning God's justice. They said God was not a just God. They could do anything they want. As a matter of fact, they said that the people that were sinners was making out better than the saints. And you know what? That, that, that even now, sometimes it seems that the sinners are getting away. But God told us that fret not yourself because of evil. You don't have to worry about it. Just keep, just keep watching. Because they will soon be uh, cut down. And, and so, but you don't have to worry about it. But on today, we want to look at charge five. And charge five is of uh, one that he called, he said that they had become disobedient. They were not following his rules or his guidelines. And, and, and I want to look at, uh, yes, the charge, but, but God gave them an offer that came along with the charge. Now, I do know that, and I think that uh, it's important that we look at verse 6, because verse 6 ends the fourth charge, and it talks about the faithfulness of God. And I think that it builds or leads us into this fifth charge and how important it is to understand really where God is or where God was and what he's still doing in our life. Because he had just declared to Israel before this fifth charge how faithful he was how, how about the goodness of himself. He, he talks about his faith. And how many of you know God is faithful? He, he, he is a faith. And, and, and that is really just one of the attributes of God. Look at verse 6. Verse 6 says, now, now remember, he, he's just talking about how uh, uh, in that forecharge, how they had questioned God's justice, but God tells them that he's the same. Uh -huh. And he's going to judge, uh, judge the bad just as he's going to judge the good. Look at what he said. For I am the Lord. Uh -huh. Now the word that's used here for Lord, the Hebrew word is Jehovah. Uh -huh. and, and this word, Jehovah, had a different constitution to the Hebrew people. They understood that it was not just Lord. But when he was talking about Jehovah, he was implying his immutable uh, faithfulness in fulfilling his promise. And so when he tells to them, for I am the Lord. Uh -huh. In other words, I keep my promise. Uh -huh. I keep my word. Uh -huh. If I said I'm going to do it, uh -huh. I do it. Uh -huh. And so that's what he declared to Israel. And really, he declared that to us. Mm -hmm. So uh, if God has made a promise to you, how many of you in here can stand and stand without a doubt that God did not live up to his promise? I didn't say he didn't live up to your request. <laughs> but I said he didn't live up to his. Because how many know every request we make, God didn't say he was going to fill it? Oh, yeah, I don't show up that quiet. Because we done got called up in this prosperity ministry, this name and claim it, and God didn't say everything you name is going to be yours. Now they're going to beat me off. <laughs> but that's why some of them get in the church and they get right back out because they be fooled about God said just name it. He didn't say just name it. He claimed it. Because if it is, I would not be where I'm at today. And you wouldn't either, Matthew said. I'm not going to be shamed. My salary would be a lot more than it is. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't need a salary because I'd already be a billionaire. <laughs> I didn't say I'd be there. I would be 
At least that would be I can tell you all to preach for you. <laughs> and it wouldn't be just me. All of us. It would be no poor with us if we could just name it. But he said poor. So somebody not right. And I can tell you who it is. But he said, but I'm the Lord. He says to Israel, I tell you now. Now why was that so important? Because he said I'm the same judge back then that I was back then as I am right now. And he said, therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. And in other words, he said, not only do I keep my promises, he said that if, it, if I was not a God that stood on my word, you wouldn't be here. Because you have violated my law. And by right, I should have destroyed you. And if we look at us on today, and look at what we have done, how unfaithful we have been, God had the right to destroy us. Love it up? The way to keep Without parole. Did y'all with me? And so he says to Israel now, although I am a God of faithfulness, I bring my fifth charge of you. Are, you have not been like I have. You have not kept my word. He said, not only am I a faithful God, not only am I a merciful and a gracious, gracious God, he said, if it was not been for my grace and my mercy, you wouldn't be standing. But he says to us, as he leads from there, talking about who he is, he now comes to the fifth charge to Israel. And he says to Israel, you have been disobeyed. Be. And this is what I want to look at today. This is fifth charge. For sadly, not only did it fit Israel, it fits us also. He says, remember, God just reminded Israel of how faithful he had been. But listen to verse 7. That's how Even from the days of your father, you're going away from my orders, my commandments, my laws, and have not kept them, return unto me, and I will return unto you. Now we, some of us that really catch it, but we ought to be shouting right now. Said the Lord of hosts, but you said, wherein shall we return? Three little points that we want to look at about this verse, and we're going to take our seat. I had you to read verse 8, but we're not even going to put it up today. First thing that ought to jump out at us about this verse is, is that many of us are like Israel. We didn't pick up all this wrong on our own. Look, look at it. First thing it says is that it had been passed down from generations. Look, look at it again. It said now, y'all. It said, even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my. Now I know what I said. And I'm gonna tell the same story I said this morning, because this is a true story. When I I worked on many, you know, I did most of my time on the farm and it, and uh, when you're out in the world, you meet people, you met whoever you was with and did things and one of the things that I found out is we would conversate and, uh, with different individuals and men talking their stuff, and I found out one of the things that were passed down uh, to many other families, uh, uh, to some of the men, is that when you get married, make sure you keep a spare tie uh -huh. on the side. And they weren't talking about on the car. <laughs> Now, do you think that's going to cause peace in a matter? Look at it, look at it. But that was some things that were passed down trying to make the man be a man. Uh -huh. But what it was really doing was making him be outside of what God had assigned him to do. Uh, and, and so what he said is we picked up some of these bad habits from our father. And now, we, we talk about, well, you know, if you ain't going to take a nip. And we know it's wrong, the, the way some of us act, but we tolerated it even in some of our churches. 
that some of our deacons would sit up and you couldn't be close to them. Him say he had to preach it. So what I'm trying to tell you is, is that Jesus, God says to Israel, the problem didn't start with you. I, I know you have married women with idol gods, but it didn't just start with you. It started with your forefathers. Uh -huh. They went contrary to my will and yes, my way, Wait, uh -huh. and you picked it up. And you wonder why when we talk about it's a generational problem when you see some of the families uh, seem like they get in a rut and they can't ever get out of a rut. You tell them it's all right to shack up. Why did you tell them that mess? You, you, you see what I'm saying? And I'm not picking on any certain thing, but if it's outside of the realm of God, and when you tell them it's all right in your family, and then they see it's all right, and then guess what you think the next generation will do? And he said, it's been from generation to generation. And he said, and they, and they were doing their own thing. And we're doing our own thing now. We're making our own laws. And that's why God and all said one thing. And we making it, we write the law to say it how we want it to say it. And so God told Israel, and the same thing is to us, and we said this on that, so now I didn't got to say this again, is that you can't bring phony sacrifices and come with me with phony tears and think you're going to get me to say sorry. And this is what he told Israel before. Because he said that I would rather that you be obedient. I want your sacrifices, but for being disobedient and bringing unworthy sacrifices will work. R write this down and I'll read it. First Samuel 15, 22. Samuel, God had Samuel to give Saul a message. Y'all remember the first king of Israel? And God, Saul was doing real good. And Saul did like the people wanted him to do. God had given him an order of what he should do. He said, I'm going to give you uh, this, I forgot who they were warned against. I'm going to give you the victory over them. But now when you go in, Ricky, I want you to kill everything. Take care of it, everything, everything, everything. And when they got in, they looked at all the gold. They looked at all them good animals. And they said, well, God don't know what he told me. <laughs> don't kill everything. Save the best. And then when you get back, you know, give God a little bit off the top. And he, you can pacify him with, you know, all he wanted, 10%. Give him 10%, you keep him 90%. Now, he told you to do away with all of it, but see, you had a plan. Your plan was, I'll keep the good, give him the 10%, and he'll be happy. Yeah. But look at what God told Saul, and that's when Saul got booted out of the kingdom. First Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, talking to Saul, that the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, and what he was saying is he did, did not say he didn't have the like in sacrifice and offer because he wants you to bring them. They understood that. But look at what he goes on to say. But as does he have, have as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as in, in obeying the, the voice of the law. Behold, to obey is better than fact sacrifice. And so what God is telling us, I want you to be um, I want you to keep my commandment. Because that's what Jesus said in John 14 and 15, if you love me. Now if you love me, how many of you love God? Yeah, some of y'all didn't raise your hand. How many of you did not shame and say you love God? Now, if you're on the outside of the church, how many of you say and say you love God? And I see you on the outside right now. You'll say it. I told my experience, didn't I? A few years ago, when it wasn't, when I was playing uh, outlaw softball on Sunday, and they will stand up, and I didn't stand up for God. You know, so be willing to stand on the outside. And so he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 15 and 10, Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. And when you abide in the love of Jesus, you got something. And so first of all, tell your neighbor, some of the problems we have didn't just start.
Y'all scared to come? You, you, you know they can just start. You know, I know I know what the Bible said, but isn't it strange we want to put some? Yeah, I know, but mama, grandmama, grandmama told me that you don't have to do this. But what does the Bible say? But, but I know that we've been doing it a long time. But if it's wrong, this seven point, tell your neighbor, seven point is even though we're guilty, God makes us an option. And many of you are familiar, because some of you have been there, with plea bargaining. And, and, and plea bargaining is not bad when you know you're wrong, and you, and, uh, or when the prosecutor don't really have all the, the evidence, they'll try to plea bargain. But tell your neighbor, God makes them an offer, but it's not a plea bargain. Yeah. See, a plea bargain is saying, I'm really not sure, sure if I can convict you, but tell your neighbor, God had all of the facts together. And he will... Let us know as we walk back through the verses 8 through 12 that he had all of the detail to show that Israel was disobedient. But he makes them run off and he gives them a second chance. And, and he gives them a second chance to your neighbor not because they had something to plead with, but because he loved them. Love. Tell your neighbor he loves me. Love. Just the same. And, and so he offers us also the same. And, and so he said to them that I know I can prove that you are disobedient, but because of his love that he has for us, he's given all of us a second chance. Uh -huh. So what was the offer? The offer was, return unto me, uh -huh. and I will return unto you, said the Lord of hosts. And, and, and as you weigh your options, should you stay where you are, or should you return? Uh -huh. Israel had to weigh their options, and they weighed their options, and and, and some of you might not totally understand that if you return back to God, uh -huh. that there will be some benefit. How do I know we don't totally understand? Because many times we will allow Satan to trick us and make us think that we are better off where we are serving man than we would be if we go back to serving God. Yeah. You don't believe it, but God, God also was returned unto me, and I will return unto you. Uh -huh. If you're not doing well, and yeah. you know that you are struggling, yeah. and you realize that you don't have to be where you are, you, are, you should hurry up and run back to God. Yes, but tell your neighbor, we don't just hurry up and run. Because many of us found ourselves like Israel. We don't really understand or believe that we are wrong. First thing they said, that uh, before you can solve a problem, you got to realize that you got a problem. Uh -huh. And to tell your neighbor the third point is, is that Israel didn't realize they had a problem. Uh -huh. And the problem is that many of us don't realize that we are out of the ark of safety of God. And so we decided we want to stay just where we, uh, where we are. We are. <laughs> That's a bad thing. <laughs> Look at this last, last point. It, is they said that they were not disobedient. All right. They said that God was the one that was unfaithful. But remember, they said that God did not love them. Uh -huh. Go back to the second verse of this first chapter. That God said, I have loved you. But Israel said, the Lord, yet you said, wherein have, I, have the Lord loved you? In other words, they told God he was a liar. And if you feel God is lying, you feel that man is treating you better. You feel that man is treating you better than God. And so they said that God, we, we don't need to return to you. Because number one, we never left you. Now we're going through some problems, but it's not because we have been unfaithful to you. It's because you've fallen down on your end. And you know what, every so often, uh, we will get in our uh, pity party and we will swear God has not kept his He's not taking up his end. When the news is not good, sometimes we will think that God has dropped the ball. But God said, return to me and I will return to you. But listen at Israel's response. Israel's response was, uh, wherein shall we return? The New Living Translation puts it like this. 
But you ask, how can we return when we have never gone away? I'm still doing what I suppose to do. I come to church. I know that's all I do, but I show up. I look at my Bible sometimes. I pray, say my prayer every now and again, and when something happened in my life, I do like the United States, I call for a day of prayer. When something goes wrong, I call folks and text them and tell them to pray for me. But you know, when things ain't going well, I, you know, you know, I'm about my own being I don't have time to be, you know, and, and so, but, but I never left you. I'm, I'm still there. I, I mean, I know the crops is not no, my crop's not conducive, but it's not because of me. And they don't realize that they're not producing because God not sending rain. Uh -huh. <laughs> but but and if he's not sending the rain because you haven't been faithful. Uh -huh. But but they said that, but uh, uh, we never left. Mm -hmm. We still doing what we're supposed to do. Well, you know, we would do a little bit better. I, I know God if he brings this up. And I know you're going to bring it up. And I know you're going to talk about, I brought animals that wasn't right, but I'm bringing them animals because, you know, if you're going to get some good animals, you know, I would have brought some good animals. But, but, but why are you sacrificing the way they are in the first place? Because you didn't live up to what you said you would do. And so they were saying to God, we're doing what we're supposed to do, and we've kept your commandments. But God said, guilty. And tell your neighbor, if God said guilty, and the world said innocent, <laughs> if God said guilty, the world said innocent, you are guilty. If God said innocent, and the world said guilty, you are innocent. Thank you so much. And that's the only way you're going to get to heaven. And so he says to Israel, and he said to us today that if you have found yourself outside of the ark of Satan, return to me. Leave your sinful ways and just return. And if you return to me and turn from being disobedient and come back to me, the good news is that God promises us and he left us. And that's why I wanted to look at verse 6 is that God keeps his promises. And God said, I will return back to you. And when God comes back to us, God brings something with him. And when God brings something with him, it's not just anything. But when God comes back to us and he covers us, God keeps us in the awe of his safety. But sadly, the problem that Israel was facing was not something new. The problem was that Moses told them before they entered into the promised land that these things would happen if they turned their back on God. But Moses also told them that if they turned their back on God, that because God was faithful, he would come back and give them a second chance. L listen to write this scripture now also. Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, verses 30 and 31 says this, and I'm going to leave you with this scripture because this scripture clearly defines what God was saying that he would do to Israel if they returned back to him. Moses told them this would happen, and now they're standing looking at what Moses told their forefathers would happen when they turned their back on God. Verse 30 said, when thou art in tribulations, and all of these things have come upon thee, all of what things, go back and read the above verse, it talks about when they had become unfaithful to God, that thou, when they had married, that they had sought to serve an idol God, that not only were their crops going to fail, they were going to get put in bondage, not only were they going to be put in bondage, he said that, but they would eventually come out of bondage, but when they would come out of bondage, they would find themselves needing God more than they ever needed Him before. But He said, but if thou turn to the Lord, thou God, and shalt be obedient to His voice, listen at verse 31, He's telling them now, that's what God is telling if you return to me, tell your neighbor, He's making an offer. He, he, he's giving you an opportunity to get things right. He's giving you an opportunity 
to get out of this slump that you're in. Yeah. Verse 31 says, For the Lord, thou God, is merciful God. Yeah. Tell your neighbor he's a merciful God. Yeah. He is a merciful God. And he said, Because he is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, neither forget the covenant of thy uh, father which he swore. In other words, thank be to God. He's a merciful God. A merciful because God. when you think about mercy, you think about pity. When you think about pity, you think about compassion. And every many times in the Old New Testament, it said Jesus looked down and had, That's it. That's it. He had compassion. He had pity. He had mercy. And thanks be to God, God looked past my fault and looked at my messed up state and had mercy on me. Aren't you glad that he didn't only look at us? But he also looked at you yeah. and didn't, didn't give you what you deserve. Uh -huh. But he had, he had, he had. Anybody there thankful for mercy? Yeah. Thank me to God yeah. that he is a merciful God. Not only he said is he a merciful God, but because he is a merciful God, he said that he didn't forsake you. Uh -huh. I know you left him and you turned away from him and turned to idol God, but God stuck by you. Yeah. Even when you built the idol cast, God stuck by you. Yeah. Even when you deserted him, God stuck yeah, 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 yeah. Let me talk about me, yeah, Paul. Yeah, yeah. I know none of y'all ever been there, but I'm thankful to God that even when I uh, uh, didn't do what I was supposed to do, I thank God that somebody was praying for us, and that, that even when I deserted him, that, that God didn't forsake us and leave us out there on our own. You, you know when you were doing things that when you weren't saying your prayer, but thank be to God, somebody else will pray for you. Yeah. It said God didn't forsake you. He kept his loving arms of protection around. Not that we were better than others, but just think about some of the mess that you've done. Others are locked up. And not only are some locked up, some are sleeping. Yeah. That means dead because but God kept his eye on you. Uh -huh. And every now and then you could look back over your life and you get excited and happy about what God has done. So he said he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee. By right, none of us uh -huh. have done so good, uh -huh. have earned the, rip, the privilege yeah. to be standing where we are, or sitting yeah. where we are today. If it had not been for his mercy, God would, we would all be destroyed. Then fourth, and I'm going to leave you with this third. Uh, he said that it was because of the commitment of others. The commitment, the, that promise that he made to your forefathers. That many of you are here. And I said this morning, and I said again, and I'm not ashamed, that, that I, I, I look back and realize that the prayers of some of those that were praying for me even before I was born, they said, God, let my offspring have something better than I have. Open up doors for my offspring, opportunities that I never had. And I hadn't kept bits of favor, but because they prayed to God, and God said, I'm going to keep them, I'm going to give them things that you never had. And we are living this moment. All because of God's grace and God's mercy. And you ought to tell God, thank you. Do you ever look back over your life and tell God, thank you for all that he's done in your life. Thank you for not forsaking you. Thank you for not giving you what you deserve. But thank you for his grace and his mercy. As he said, you're not destroyed. Now remember, he told Israel, that's why I want us to look at verse 6. Not because you've been so good, but because the promise I made to your father. So he said that if you keep my covenant, if you keep my, uh, if you keep my order, if you do what I ask you to do, God says that I will return to you and tell your neighbor, if God returned, look at all we received. We get his, we will receive his mercy. We will receive him not forsaken us. We will receive his blessing that he had waiting for us. So how do we return? We return by accepting him. As our personal yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you ain't never known him, that's not what you do. That's it. But if you become out of the ark of safety, you go to him and repent and ask God to give you a second chance. Mm -hmm. And so the question shouldn't be now if I'm guilty. Uh -huh. The question should be 
Lord, I want to take your offer. Yeah. I, I want to take that offer that you're giving me. And not that I deserve it, uh -huh. but I want to take that offer and I want to return to uh -huh. you. Or uh, if I've never been there, I want to now come into the ark yeah. of your safety. For when you return to God and accept Jesus as your personal oh, Savior, the one that That's died, I don't carry, the one that was put in a bar of grave for you that was crucified on your behalf, the one that rose early on the third day morning on your behalf, you get all that God has to offer. When we become his child, we will have some rejoicing. For when you become his child, you get an inheritance up in glory that man can't take away. But not only do you get an inheritance up in heaven, when we return to God, Paul said that God will supply all of our needs. And tell your neighbor that's the reason right now to shout. And not only can we shout when uh, things are going well, mm -hmm. we can shout even in the midst of trouble, trouble when you return back to God. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's kind of tough. You said that we can. I know Paul said rejoice, and I said again, rejoice always. But how can we rejoice in the midst of trials and tribulation? Mm -hmm. For when you already know the end, you can rejoice. Uh -huh. When you already know that it might be dark on this side, but if I get to the other side, there's going to be some light. You can rejoice for you know that you're not going to stay on this side forever. Well, this is what Jesus said to us. And this is the message that God is giving to us. You don't have to stay in the miserable, wretched situation that you are in. You can give your life over to me. Or he, he says to Israel, return unto me and I will return unto you. Jesus put it this way, and I'm going to leave you with this verse. John, the 16th chapter, verse 33. Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. I said, Jesus, that sounds pretty good. But that's when things are going well. What's going to happen when trouble comes in my life? What's going to happen with the job down south? We just got some news the other day that one of the other companies in Memphis will not only be down south, but they will be close. What's going to happen when my spouse go to acting a fool? And what's going to happen when uh, 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 the doctors give me news that I don't really want to hear? What's going to happen when my child end up on drugs? What's going to happen when the news is not good? Jesus said, I'm telling you, you can still have peace. I said, well, how can I have peace when he said my harvest, that's what Israel was saying, my crop is falling off of the, uh, off of the vine. They don't go to the length of the time. How can I have peace when Persian got their hand on me? How can I have, Jesus said, you didn't read the whole thing. He said, in this world you shall have tribulation. But he said, I'll be a good to He said, you can rejoice now. You can shout. And I said, well, how can I shout in the middle of my trouble? For well, the good news is, tell your neighbor, that God have already overcome the world. So whatever betides you, God will. Anybody know he will? Take care of it. And that's why he's off here. Return unto me. And I think Tommy Dorsey put it like this. Tommy Dorsey said, in the midst of my trouble, when I couldn't see my way out, after my daughter and after my wife had died, when it seemed like the world was closing in on me, he said, I didn't say, Lord, let me take your hand. He said, I said, first of Lord, I mean, you know, when God walks with you, when God talks with you, and he tells you, he, you, know, you got something. You got more than men can bring against you. You got more than the physical storm. You got more than the natural disaster can come in your life. But when God walks with you, yeah. when God talks with you, when 